Everybody else shut up. I don't need anybody else to talk, just me and Tony. But Tony, please, this is what you said. You gave a model of eclipses, didn't you? You said, I can do this here on Earth. It's a good, reasonable assumption that that's what's happening in the sky. Yes? Yeah, in yeah, my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, but what if there were yeah, certain yeah. problems with that? So, for example, you can't make a shadow smaller than the object casts in it, for example. Oh, now, you no. can't do that. Okay, guys, so that's my attempt at some comedy, but in all seriousness, this is the sort of misinformation that Flat Earth has put out there, right? See, this guy has not looked into it at all. This is the problem with Flat Earthers, as I explained about myself, why I didn't know these things, because I didn't want to look into it. Now, these guys are not looking into it. If they looked into it, they'd find out that actually, yeah, you can. You can make the shadow smaller. It's called the umbra. And the penumbra is what he's looking at. Why is the shadow bigger? Well, you're looking at the penumbra. Because you don't know what you're talking at. You don't know what he's talking about, mate. And this is the sort of misinformation that other flat earthers should be correcting. He's on Brandon's show. Brandon must know this. Does he or, or does he not? Adam. Adam Meekin. Does he know this? No, he doesn't. So this is the sort of misinformation that gets passed down to newbie flat earthers. Like new flat earthers that don't look into it because they trust what these guys are saying. That's exactly how I was when I first started out, and everyone just believes it. And, it. and it's not until you actually test it and see right here, you can actually see it. That's just not true, guys. Now, I know it sounds like I'm having a whinge, I'm complaining, I'm moaning, I'm upset. That's because I am. That's what I'm doing. I need to be calm, I guess. I don't know how to convey it any clearer, and I don't even know if this is going to reach any would-be or current flat earthers because they just don't want to know this stuff guys they don't want to know it willful ignorance is that is that what it's called so yeah i'm whinging i'm whinging i'm having a whinge <laughs> so before we continue on with more rubbish statements from flat earthers i just want to shout out everybody that has subscribed to my channel I've gone from 70 subscribers up to 210. I kind of feel like a real YouTuber again. And if you like my videos, you like my content, consider hitting the subscribe button. And also just quickly, Craig from Seek Truth Speak Truth has got a fundraiser going. He's sent a lot of subscribers and views my way. So the least I can do is shout his channel out. He's got some PC issues. He's got a GoFundMe campaign happening. So donate what you can, if you can. Anyway, guys, we'll get back to the bullshit statements from Flat Earthers. <laughs> so the other bit of misinformation I want to talk to you guys about today is how Flat Earthers, like Adam Meekin, will claim that the moon is lit internally. And the reason why the moon's orientation is different between the north and south is due to perspective. And I'm going to show you why that is just simply not true. So I've just set up a bit of a demonstration, and what I want to show you first is the orientation of the moon in the northern hemisphere, opposed to the orientation of the moon in the southern hemisphere. So as we can see where I am in the southern hemisphere, the impact crater is at the top, and in the northern hemisphere, the impact crater is at the bottom, okay? Now we know why that is, is because it's a globe. That's our explanation for it. So the flat earth explanation for this is perspective. So their theory is you paint a number on the ceiling, and you walk to the other side of the room, and it looks different. So I've made a cutout of the moon, and put the crater at the top in the southern hemisphere and move to the other side as we can see and it's upside down from our perspective so in that regard they're correct okay but that's a flat disc on a ceiling now if i show you the globe model so i found this old paper globe light shade and drew the impact crater at the top that's the southern hemisphere and now we turn the camera around and the craters at the bottom okay so both theories work pretty well. So the flat earth theory could only be possible if the moon was a flat disk, say inside of firmament, which could be true. But the other issue is, is that if we have a look at this, so this is the moon's orientation and all the phases modeled perfectly on a globe. Absolutely perfectly. 
we can see down the bottom here we've got the time, the phase, the diameter, the distance, the position, everything modelled absolutely perfectly and what we do notice is that the moon has a wobble to it, right? so we can see how the moon is wobbling, it is moving back and forth slightly so it can't be a disc guys I'd, and it's not lit internally now you might say oh this is uh, CGI well no it's not because if we have a look at this actual photo you can actually see this is a real photo of the moon and it's a shadow it's not internally lit guys it doesn't illuminate from the inside how could it show crescent moons if it was a flat disc it's just it just doesn't I mean oh I mean I know what the flat earthers are trying to do they just say this stuff flat earthers just make claims and don't back it up they don't actually look into it like I am and do actual tests to, to say oh hey look this maybe isn't correct and let's say they say well it's a globe then well it can't be because perspective would count that out because we move to the side we can see the crater we're on a flat earth like I am and I'm moving the camera around like I am and bam that crater's gone and we see a shadow on the other side so it just doesn't work so being a sphere on a flat earth it's just not possible now the globe earth has been modeled perfectly real life modeling with a ping pong ball on a stick with a light source showing the phases of the moon so physically it's demonstrated to be correct now also in this simulation here you can see it's modeled absolutely perfectly on a globe I have heard Nathan Oakley talk about yes he's seen it's modeled perfectly on a globe but then he turns around and says the concave earth have also modeled it perfectly to fit a concave earth and then he carries on but he forgets but he forgets to mention that it has not been modelled on a flat earth because they can't model it if they if they could they would show it it's just like lunar eclipses if they could model it they would show us it but they can't that's why Nathan and QE have shifted through to the scientific method because it's a way out for them so my conclusion is that these are two bits of misinformation that these guys have not talked about have not looked into have not demonstrated have just claimed it yeah and walked away that's why i made that funny video about adam and <laughs> the phases of the moon is caused exactly like his ten dollar lamp from poundland for a start it cannot be a globe it has to be a flat disc and it just wouldn't work it just doesn't work it can't work but if anybody can show me why i'm wrong or how i'm wrong i want to hear it i'm quite happy to be proven wrong i'm quite happy to concede that i was wrong but in this instance, I don't think I am. Change my mind, guys. It's just not possible on their model. Flat Earth over. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.